Hello everyone, my name is Paper Napkin, and welcome back to another episode of Let's Play Pokemon Fire Red. In the last episode, we did a little bit of spelunking, and we made it all the way through Rock Tunnel. That's right folks, we made it all the way through in one piece. Uh, unfortunately, one of our team members did not. As you probably saw, Dixie Kong uh, suffered some life-threatening injuries, and she finally succumbed to them. Um, I'd like to take this moment to have a, a moment of silence for her, if you don't mind. Thank you. Um, as we continue onwards, we are on Route 10, which is actually a really short route. So we're just going to grab this Nanad Berry, and I don't think we have to fight anyone on the way. Uh, that was close. And as you can see, we are now in Lavender Town. Uh, in terms of size, Lavender Town is really, really tiny. I think the only town that's probably smaller in comparison is uh, Pallet Town, which is the starting town. And um, maybe Cinnabar Island, if I remember correctly. Yeah, I think Cinnabar Island is pretty small. Um, I'm going to take this moment to put Dixie away in the box, um, just because she's no longer viable for our team. She's not allowed to be on our team, I mean. Goodbye, Dixie. Thank you for all your, your heart attack moments, your struggles. We didn't really kick it off too much, but, uh, you know, we had, we had high hopes for you. Um, first up, I guess most obvious as we came down, is the Pokemon Tower. This is actually a mass graveyard where Pokemon trainers bring their deceased Pokemon. Um, so yeah, not only do Pokemon faint in this game, but in reality, they also die. Which is kind of a, a tough thing to kind of put into a video game that children play. Uh, kudos to Nintendo for doing so. I know in the red and blue version they didn't really explain this all too well, but in this version they do. Elaborate a little bit more. Um, we can go into the tower at this point, there's a rival battle. Uh, unfortunately, we can't explore the, the full tower at this point, because we need a certain key item in order to see uh, ghost Pokemon. Uh, I kind of spoiled it, but hey, you probably already know at this point. So we're going to press onwards. Um, as usual, there's a Poke Center up there, a Poke Mart. Uh, I'm not going to go there just yet. Um, up here we have Mr. Fuji's house, who is a Pokemon volunteer. Really well known for taking care of Pokemon, uh, injured, sick, uh, nursing them back to health. Uh, unfortunately, he's not here, so um, we're going to have to come back to another time and try and talk to him then. Uh, if we come in this house here, there will be this uh, old man who's also the name rater. He'll rate the nicknames of your Pokemon. Um, he usually gives general, generic responses that really don't you know, matter too much. If you like your Pokemon nicknames, you like them. Uh, he also gives you the option of renaming certain Pokemon if you want. Um, which is pretty useful if, you know, you make a mistake or you just don't like your Pokemon nickname. Maybe your Pokemon evolves and uh, the nickname doesn't match anymore. Kind of like Godish. Uh, I'm going to stick with my nicknames just because I think they're pretty cool. And if we come down here, this is Route 12. Um, we could go this way, but it's kind of leads to a dead end eventually. So we're actually going to go west onto Route 8, which is a new route, meaning we can catch a new Pokemon. If we can find a patch of grass. Hmm. I think we're gonna have to fight one of these guys. Uh, let's fight the old man, I guess. He looks harmless. But in reality, he's not. He's a pedophile. No, I didn't say that. He is a gamer, which means when we defeat him, we'll actually get some pretty good money. Um, first up is a Growlithe. And I'm guessing his second Pokemon is a Vulpix, which is uh, kind of alluding to the fact that... Um, you can catch these two Pokemon in the next grass area, uh, depending what version you are, that is. Uh, since I'm playing Fire Red, I'll be able to catch a Growlithe, if I'm lucky. Uh, if you're playing Leaf Green, you can actually catch a Vulpix. Uh, Growlithe is more physical in nature, I would say. It's more of a damage dealer, a little bit more fragile, it has really good speed. And uh, Vulpix is more defensive, but it's still a really good Fire-type Pokemon. And at this point in the game, if you didn't choose Charmander as your starter Pokemon, this is going to be the only Fire-type Pokemon that you can have at this point. Uh, even later on, the other options for a Fire-type Pokemon are, you know, few and far between. So this is actually a really good point in the game to pick one up. And as you can see, oh shit is making quick work of these guys. Oh, that's annoying. Um, both of those Pokemon actually know Roar which makes you run away from battle, or if you're in a Pokemon Trainer battle, it'll switch out your Pokemon. Um, I'm a little worried if we run into a Growlithe in the patch of grass and it roars me away, because that counts. Like, I won't be able to catch another Growlithe after that. 
So I'm probably... I don't know what I'm going to do. I don't know if I'm going to lead off with Goddish and try to put it to sleep right away. Yeah, I think I'll do that. Even though I might take some damage. Okay, she's already in front. That's good. And our new Pokemon is... The suspense is killing me. Yes! Exactly what I wanted to see. A female Growlithe. Uh, I guess a male Growlithe would have been just as good, but I kind of like female Growlithe. Because my whole team's kind of female me in nature. So yeah, um, let's try putting it to sleep. And yes, okay, good. This is excellent. This is excellent indeed. Uh, hopefully I can get off a cut and not kill it, and then I can be able to throw a great ball at it and catch it. Come on, let's see the damage. Not too bad, not too bad. I wonder if I should try one more. Yeah, I think I will. Okay. Uh, that's, that's as close as I'm going to go. I want to kill this thing, just because this is going to be a really good addition to my team. Uh, such a good addition, I'm going to use a Great Ball instead of a normal Pokeball. I'm taking no unnecessary risk at this point, folks. One, two, three, let's see little stars. Yeah! And we caught ourselves a Growlithe. All right. Exactly what I wanted. Exactly. Um, yes, yeah, so let's give Growlithe a nickname. Um, it's female, so I'm gonna call it Rick. Ricky? That's a female name, right? Yeah, that's good enough. Ricky. Ricky the Growlithe. All right. I am pretty excited, folks. Excited indeed. Um, there's also a couple berries in here. Oh, random battle. And it's Meowth. Oh, that would have been a good addition to the team. Uh, there's also like Pidgeys and Ekans and stuff like that. Uh, nothing too important, but uh, if you want a Meowth for whatever reason and you didn't catch one uh, near Vermilion City, that would probably be your best chance to get one. And as you can see, Pidgey. They're pretty high level. You I mean, if you don't have a flying type Pokemon at this point, you can probably just catch a Pidgey, level it up one time, and then bam, you have a Pidgeotto. But why you wouldn't have a flying type Pokemon at this point is uh, beyond me. Um, if you come up here, you can see there's like four trainers kind of standing really awkwardly. It's kind of hard to explain what they're doing. Um, pretty good fighting experience if you want to grind a little bit. Those bikers, uh, you can also fight them. Um, you can fight this old man. You can fight that nerd too. Uh, if we try to go this way into Celadon City, uh, the guard will stop us saying he's thirsty, just like the other one that uh, we encountered before. But there is a way to get in, and that is through another underground tunnel. And uh, what does she have to say? Department store in Celadon has a great selection. Do I go there very often? No! This is actually going to be my first time. I'm so excited. It's kind of cool how they like red and blue. Maybe like a, a shout out to the original games. Maybe not. I'm just overthinking this, probably. But if we come down this way, um, just like in the underground tunnel before, there's probably lots of items around here if you want to take the time to look around. But I don't want to. I'm just going to come straight out here. What does he have to say? Sleepy Pokemon? That would be Snorlax. That's that big giant thing we saw before. Um, we are now on Route 7. We can pick up a Weper Berry. It's like a Weapon Berry. That'd be cool. And there's also a patch of grass here, so maybe we can catch another Pokemon. How exciting would that be, folks? Two new Pokemon, and it's a- oh, It's just an Oddish, and I'm sending out my Goddish. How funny is that? I'm just gonna run away. No point in fighting it. But if we come down over here, and to the left, we have arrived in Celadon City, which is probably the biggest city in the Pokemon world, at least in this version, the Kanto region. I'm going to heal up quickly, just because I, I put um, Ricky to sleep there, and I kind of want her to back out. Get her some experience points, I'll level up. Oh, I'm so excited. Oh, I'm really excited that I got that Growlithe. Oh, probably best case scenario right there, folks. Um, you know, Random number generator hasn't been my, uh, my friend at times, but uh, it worked out in this episode. And uh, I think this is where I'm going to call it for this episode. Uh, the next episode is probably going to be entirely focused on stuff that we can do here in Celadon City. Uh, I'll go over all the different kinds of buildings, all the items we can find. Um, if there's time, I might even go and take on the gym leader. But that'll be next time. Let's play Pokemon Fire Red. My name is Paper Napkin. See you guys later.